Now I'm going to show you how to pack down the main tent setup on the cruiser high side. Packing up the kitchen is super easy. First, we remove the hoses from their fittings underneath the kitchen. To disconnect your water and your gas, simply push the bayonet in, twist and pull it out. With the water, push the collar back and it'll unclip. Now the hoses are disconnected and stowed away, remove our leg from the front and on the right hand side of the kitchen is a slide with a blue tab. Press the blue tab down, hold it down until the kitchen takes up the second stage of the slide, then push it into place lock our latches and we can return our dust covers to their original position. When we're packing up our camper getting ready to travel, we need to work out whether or not we want power to the fridge box. If you require your refrigerator to run while you're towing the camper, you'll need to leave the main switch on and the refrigerator power switch on. If you're not using that, you can simply switch everything off, turn off the mains power, close the cabinet and you're traveling. When we pack up our cruiser high side, we need to return the table to its original position, which means folding it up. When you look at it, you'll see one of the legs has a little higher pedestal on one side. That is the one you fold down second. The one with the shorter hinge, put that down first, push down, that's packed up. Then we can return it to its position in the middle of the lounge. That's now in place. We can get our infill panel. Drop that in, get our cushions. Now that's done. Packing up the stabiliser legs is exactly the opposite of the setup. Easy to do. Put your brace in. Wind the leg up, then lock it up out of the way. Always make sure the blue handle returns into the lock position so that leg can't drop. Packing up our main tent, it's important to remember to close up all the internal window flaps and zip up the outside ones as well. Once the canvas is all zipped into place, it offers the best possible protection for our fly screen. The fly screen is nowhere near as durable as the canvas, so you don't want poles rubbing on it. Completing that, I can take out my four spreader poles and my two upright support poles, lay them down on the back of the lounge so they're there ready for my next setup, push all my bow poles down, and then I can pack up the camper. Before I hop out of the camper, what I'm doing is this draft flap needs to get detached from there and tucked underneath the mattress. Why I do this is when I pack up the camper, I don't want canvas to get caught in here between the rubber pinch seal and the flat area on the body of the trailer. What happens if canvas protrudes through those seals, when it gets wet, it can actually wick water into your camper, which is never good. It can cause mold and all sorts of problems inside. So we do that so we don't have to worry about reaching across the front box and tucking it in when we're packed up. Now I've removed all my spreader poles, front support poles, Everything is collapsed on the inside of the tent. I've also unrolled all my canvas. All my internal window blinds are up and zipped into place and unrolled the door. Why I always undo the door and the fly screens is when they're in a rolled up position, they can get bent and scrunched inside the camper when you pack it up. And what that can do is damage your fly screen and you don't want that. Now I'm ready to close up my steps. 
Now packing up the steps, a very, very important thing to remember. Must be done, cannot pack it up without doing this. We need to return our adjustment bar back to its original position. So we take our linch pins out. Pull them out, slide it back in and return the linch pins. Back in there, clip them over on both sides. Now when we do this, we always put them in from the outside and push them all the way in. Don't leave them hanging out like that because that could interfere with the rubber seals around the door. So push them tidy in like that. That's both done, both pushed in. We can now fold the steps in. And when we do this, push them in so they sit hard up against the main door panel. Make sure our zippers are clear. Push the door shut, lock it up. One more check that the step is in tight. Why we do that is we wanna make sure that when we close the camper, the poles can't contact that step. If it's left sitting up or sitting out into the camper, it can foul the poles and you will end up bending them if you try and force the lid shut. The rear bow pole folds forward. So we need to push that down on both sides, get our canvas over and tucked in. Always make sure when you do this, you fold them in evenly, push it down flat on both sides to make room for the main bow poles as we close. Once we've got that done, we'll connect up our rear winch and get ready to start winching it closed. It's running my winch strap out towards the front. An important thing about winching campers open and closed is the winch angles. Now, winching this closed from the back, I don't want a flat angle. I want the front lid to be up, so my winch angle gives the winch power and the lid doesn't work against it. So to do that, I grab a spreader pole, rest it on the drawbar, and just pop it underneath there. So what I'll do is take up the slack in the rear winch until it's got the weight of the lid and winch it closed. Now it's good to go. Remember, as you winch, always stand offline from the winch strap. There's two ways you can do this. You can lower the lid down with the front winch and keep it under control. Or my preference is from here, I'll just take it over manually and tuck the canvas in as I bring the lid down. few last tucks and then I can use the winch to close the rest of the way. Just pull my little latches out of the way so they don't foul the lid. Again, very important to get all the canvas tucked in. No bits protruding out through the seals whatsoever.
Now we can start latching down. Remember when you latch down, return the linch pins into position to lock the latches. Now it's time for the boat rack. Remember, if you're on your own, it's perfectly okay to tie a piece of rope around the top of the rack to help pull it over. Also, when you're on your own, remove one of the pins from the locking arms, which will make it a lot easier for a one-person pushover. Now it's important to latch down the boat rack and return our clips. If you want to secure your camper while it's stored, you can put a padlock through the over center latch. If you can't undo these latches, you literally can't open up the camper. That's our cruiser high side all packed up, ready to move on to our next epic destination. <music>